was an address, a brief set of instructions, a picture of a necklace, and an envelope of cash. And that's it. Initially, it freaked us out because we weren't really robbers. We had done one or two breaking and entering jobs to make ends meet, but we weren't seasoned criminals at all. No one knew us, but a job is a job, and without records, it would be easy to pull it off, especially in the sleepy town of Mohawk. The house was empty when we found it, and if it hadn't been, we would have waited until everyone was gone. We didn't want to scare anyone. The three of us found a back window and climbed in. It was pitch black. We made our way up the stairs pretty easily and found the bedroom where the necklace was supposed to be locked away in a safe. Something was weird about this house. It didn't feel lived in. There were some boxes and stuff here and there, so we suspected that this family was moving in or out. But I don't know. I couldn't shake this strange feeling that something was wrong. The safe was right there in the room. I stepped aside since I wasn't good with safes as the other two went to work. I started looking around a bit. My foot hit something. It was a collection of rocks in a little box. There was something splattered on the box itself. A deep maroon stain. I started to feel sick. But before I could say anything, the other two got the safe open. They made a loud clanking noise as they peered inside. It was empty. They pulled out the instructions to read them again, but I knew this was all wrong. Not only that, but we weren't alone. You know how you can just tell sometimes that someone is watching you? I whispered out to the others. Hey, I think someone's here. But they were frantically looking through the safe, checking for hidden compartments. I moved the flashlight around the room, looking, looking. And then suddenly in the corner of the room, a kid, a little girl wrapped in cloths, one band over her eyes. Hey! and the other two looked and saw her too. We all jumped back and instantly felt stupid for being scared by a child. Listen, we're not here to hurt you, I explained. We're just leaving, okay? There's been some sort of... But she took a step forward. There was something jagged about her movements. Something unearthly. The other two pulled out their flashlights, shining them on her. We're just leaving. Are you okay? Are you hurt? I asked. She took another step forward. This was really wrong. There was a pit of stress forming in my stomach. We're just... But then she went, shh, and held out her hand. I didn't remember what she was doing until suddenly, out of nowhere, a metal chain shot out of her sleeve and hit my partners in each of their face. Their blood covered my face so quickly I couldn't even process what was happening. I just ran. I heard another set of footsteps. What's happening? I asked as I heard screams from the bedroom. A chain wrapped around my waist and pulled me backwards. I spun around and saw a body being dragged by one of the animated chains that were trailing the girl. It wriggled out of the loop around my waist and bolted down the steps. I stumbled down the stairs. I looked around for my friend. Where was? But then I heard a shriek. I swiveled the flashlight around. It only lit up a small circle. I couldn't see anything. Then suddenly, the little girl was right in front of me again. I ran back up the stairs, panting, feeling chains trying to hold my ankles. I sprinted down the hallway and ran into something wet. I looked up and it was a body. A body being held in the air by four chains. The chains pulled. Screams. The chains pulled harder. More screams. I couldn't move. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The chains pulled harder, and then suddenly, all of the limbs were torn off. I felt my legs start to give. I didn't know what was happening. How? How could this... What? And then I felt the cold of one of the chains wrap around my arm. It pulled me so quickly and with so much strength that it popped my shoulder out of its place. I screamed and pulled my limp arm to my side and ran. If I didn't run fast enough, it'd get me. If I didn't get out of there, she'd pull me apart. I got to the back of the house and tried a window, but it wouldn't budge. I tried the door, but chains were starting to cross over the entrance. So I ran to the front of the house. I tried to open the mesh door with my good arm, but it wouldn't give. Just outside, I saw people from the neighborhood. They were all standing out there. Probably gathered because they heard the noises. Help! I cried to them. Help me! There's someone in here! 
The sound of the chains was getting closer and louder. I couldn't quite make out the faces of the people just outside, just beyond the mesh. The darkness of night was shielding their eyes. Help! I tried to throw my body against the mesh door, but it was reinforced with something. Help! I felt the cold, stiff chain start to wrap against my ankles, crawl up my legs, around my body. I felt them tighten. I kept looking for someone's face to be illuminated slightly, but all I could really see were the red blinking lights of what seemed to be pagers on their waists. They all had them. I narrowed my eyes trying to make out even just one person's face, but it was too dark. The chains were around me, squeezing me. It felt like my bones were about to break, but that's when I remembered my flashlight. This was it, the final chance. After this, I wouldn't be able to move my arm at all. I pulled it out and turned it on towards the people outside. The light hit their faces, and then I saw them. They were... they were all smiling. Before I could do anything, the chain spun me around and I was facing that girl again. The girl wrapped in cloths. The chains wrapped around my mouth. Tight. Pulling hard against my teeth. Blood was starting to leak from my lips. I screamed as loud as I could, but it was just a muffled yell. And as the chains started to tear into my body, the world went quiet outside except for one person who whispered, Thank you for your sacrifice. Watch new vids every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Only on Crypt TV.